Here is an example of how to find an antiderivative of f of x. So when we're trying to find the antiderivative, what we're actually trying to find is capital F of x. This is equal to the integral of f of x dx. Our derivative of capital F of x is actually equal to our original function. So when we take the derivative of the antiderivative at the end, it should equal your original function, and that is how you know you took the antiderivative correctly. So now we can start to take our antiderivative. So for the first term, we have x squared. So when we take the antiderivative of x to the n, it's going to be x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1. This works for all integers except for negative 1. This doesn't work for negative 1 because when you add 1 to negative 1, you're going to get 0, and you cannot divide by 0. So for that first term, we have x squared, so when we add 1 to the 2, we're going to get x cubed, and then we divide by the 3. So we have x cubed divided by 3. For the next term, we have 4 over x, and 4 over x can also be written as 4 times 1 over x, and 1 over x is the same as writing x to the power of negative 1, so this term can also be equal to 4 times x to the power of negative 1. So here we see the power is negative 1, so we can't use this rule up here. So here we actually recognize that 1 over x has its own antiderivative. So the antiderivative of 1 over x is actually equal to ln absolute value x. It's absolute value because you can't take the ln of a negative number. So when we take the antiderivative of 4 over x, we have 4 times 1 over x, and the antiderivative of 1 over x is ln absolute value x. So when we take the antiderivative of 4 over x, we're going to have 4 times the antiderivative of 1 over x, which is ln absolute value x. So we have 4 times ln absolute value of x. For the third term, we have 1 over x squared, which is also the same as x to the power of negative 2. So when we add 1 to the negative 2, we're going to get negative 1. And then we can also divide by negative 1. So it'll be minus x to the power of negative 1 divided by negative 1. For the fourth term, we have 3 times square root of x. Square root of x is also the same as x to the power of a half. So when we add 1 to the half, we'll get 3 over 2. So this term will be 3 times x to the power of 3 over 2. And then you divide by 3 over 2. So for the last term, we have a constant. So when you take the integral of a constant, you simply just multiply it by x, so you're going to have c times x as the formula, and here our c is negative 2, so it's going to be minus 2x. And the last step to taking the antiderivative is remembering to add your integration constant. We have to add our integration constant because when you take the antiderivative, you're finding infinitely many solutions, and without initial values, you can't find a particular solution. So here we're just going to leave it as plus c. So the last step to finding the antiderivative here is just going to be to simplify. So the first term we can't simplify anymore. The second term we also can't simplify. But the third term we can simplify in two ways. The first way is canceling out these negatives into a positive, because when you divide two negatives, you're going to get a positive. So it'll be plus, and then we have x to the negative 1, and we know that x to the negative 1 can also be written as 1 over x. So this term is going to be plus 1 over x. For the fourth term, we have 3 divided by 3 over 2. So remembering your rules when you're dividing by a fraction, you're actually going to flip it and multiply. So we're going to have 3 times 2 over 3. So those 3's will cancel, and you'll just be left with the 2 on top. So we're going to have plus 2 times x to the power of 3 over 2. And the last term we can't simplify, and then remember to add your integration constant. So this is your final answer. That is going to be your answer for the antiderivative of f of x. But the last thing I'm going to do is just show you how you can check your answer to make sure it's right. So here we're going to take the derivative of our antiderivative that we just found. So when we take the derivative of x cubed over 3, we're going to get 3x squared divided by 3. So we'll just be left with x squared because 3's cancel. When we take the derivative of 4 ln absolute value x, we're going to be taking the derivative of ln absolute value x, which we know is 1 over x. So we have plus 4 times 1 over x, so we're actually going to divide by x here. So for the next term, 1 over x, just be careful with the signs, because 
1 over x is the same as x to the negative 1. So when you take the derivative, you're actually going to get minus x to the power of negative 2 because negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And we know that x to the power of negative 2 is the same as 1 over x squared. For the next term, we have 2 times 3 over 2. So we're going to have 2 times 3 over 2. We'll just be left with the 3. And 3 over 2 minus 1 is a half. So we'll have plus 3 times x to the power of a half. And we know that x to the power of a half is the same as the square root of x. So for the last term, when we take the derivative of negative 2x, it's just going to be negative 2. And you don't have to worry about the integration constant, because when you take the derivative of a constant, you're just going to get 0 anyways. So here we can see that we actually do have our original function. So here we see that the derivative of capital F of x is equal to small f of x. So that is how you find the antiderivative of f of x and also how you check your answer.